In this YouTube mini documentary, we'll be following arable farming enterprise Fronzen Agriculture in the southwest of the Netherlands. For over seven generations, this family-run company has been involved in farming. Almost all jobs on this large-scale farm are carried out by a team of dedicated staff and modern tractors and equipment. The farm focuses on growing valuable root crops, such as potatoes and onions, as well as Brussels sprouts and tulip bulbs. Our story starts at the end of January, normally a quiet period in the farming year, but not on this occasion. Due to a very wet autumn and winter, there was still a lot of catching up to do, such as winter ploughing. A brief dry spell allows the farm's strongest and newest tractor to come into action, a 430 horsepower Fent 943 Vario MT, pulling an 8 furrow Lemkin Diamond 16 plough. Here a cover crop is being ploughed, after which a crop of potatoes will be grown. RTK GPS is installed in all tractors for centimetre accuracy in the field. Overlaps are kept to a minimum and a higher work rate achieved. Normally these fields would be ploughed before the new year. To speed up the job, the farm hired back their old seven furrow Cavernland plough, which is seen here being used with one of the Fent 828 Vario tractors. Not far away, mushroom compost is being spread on another field. This task is in the hands of a Fent 722, one of a trio, coupled to a Tiba MS250 muck spreader. A Tract 360 digger is used to fill the spread on the headland, where it is very wet. However, being so late in the season, there is no time to spare. On this murky January day, steam coming from the compost adds to the foggy weather. Inside the farm's main building, there is also plenty to do. Potatoes, onions and carrots are being graded, packed and shipped to customers all over the world. This is done by sister company Holland Food Trade. Here, recently lifted carrots are being washed, graded and packed. The video was filmed before the widespread of the coronavirus, meaning precaution matters weren't yet necessary. We return once more to the Fent 943 Vario, which is ploughing a field of wheat stubble. The weather has cleared, giving a totally different atmosphere. And the land is even starting to dry out. The result is satisfactory. On April 1st, we returned to the farm, when the weather was a lot better. Fertiliser is being spread on this field, after which Brussels sprouts will be planted. The Amazona ZATS fertiliser spreader is GPS controlled and automatically turns on and off on headlands. It can also vary its working width and rate. One of the Fent 722s can easily handle this large hydraulically driven spreader. The crawl 
Solar is also in action today, preparing a seedbed using a 6-metre Lemkin Zircon power harrow. This clay soil was ploughed only recently, and due to a lack of frost requires a lot of plough to knock it into shape. As the furrows were relatively rough, the front cultivator couldn't be used. The tractor can easily master the power harrow, but it's chosen because of its large footprint. Onions are also being sown today, using a 160 horsepower Fent 516 Vario and 6 meter wide Monosome Precision Drill. The onions are grown on beds, with 5 rows being drilled on 150 centimeter wide beds. Large tyres underneath this relatively light tractor mean the soil structure isn't damaged early in the spring. Liquid NNP fertiliser carried on the front tank is being applied together with the seed. On May the 5th, the final field of potatoes for the year is being planted, after what was an immensely wet winter, followed by a record dry spring. This field had to be prepared twice and irrigated to create enough loose tilth for the potatoes. The Fent crawler is making a final pass, after which the potatoes are being planted using a Fent 828 and Medema CP42 rotivator and cut planter. The Vario Guide tyre inflation system is fitted to keep tyre pressures as low as possible, thus not compacting the soil. This, incidentally, is the same field as where the compost was being applied in January. What a difference three months can make! If you want to know more about the farm, take a look on their website. You can find the address in the description below. Please do stay tuned for part two in this series, which will focus on the harvest during the summer months. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.